You haven't found your way here by accident. It's a unique and meaningful connection meant to deliver the impactful message of Apostle Joshua Selman to your doorstep. This message carries the potential to not only bless you, but also inspire you for greatness. Open your heart wide and allow your mind to embrace the richness of this transformative message. Before we delve further, I extend a warm invitation for you to actively engage with this significant message. Join in by liking the video, sharing it with those in your circles who might find it beneficial, and subscribing to our channel for a consistent flow of insightful content. Your support is genuinely appreciated and plays a crucial role in our ability to continue sharing these meaningful messages. If God was Alpha, Omega, over this house, then I declare, if He has started as Alpha in your life, may He also be Omega. Every uncompleted project in your life, physical building, relationships, destiny, ministry, the grace for completion, the finisher's anointing, may it rest upon you now. You see a man make progress in life, behind that advancement, it is the Lord. He says, it is the Lord that advanced Moses. You would see Moses making progress. You would see Aaron making progress. But the Bible says, behind every advancement is the marvelous hand of God. May that be so for you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Now I begin my teaching. Second Chronicles, please, chapter 15 and verse 3. There are three things that if found missing in any territory, three things, if found missing in any territory, darkness will reign over that territory, oppression will reign over that territory, and these three things are reflected in this scripture. The Bible says, now for a long season, Israel had been without, number one, the true God. Number two, without a teaching priest. And number three, without law. So, the formula for decadence and retrogression and servitude and lack of advancement at a territorial scale is number one, the absence of the one true God. Number two, the absence of the teaching priest. Number three, the absence of principles that govern civil living within a territory. Are we together now? So, if the devil wants to oppress Ghana or Africa or Europe, or America, or any part at all, the first thing he does is he attacks their conviction so that with time, subliminally, they will get to a point where they do not acknowledge the one true God. John 17 and verse 3, Jesus is praying now. He says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, not one of them, the only true God, and Jesus, whom thou hast sent. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. We live in times where it almost becomes um, like a threat to civilization when you advocate that there is a God in heaven who rules over the affairs of men. When you mention the name Jesus, when you communicate anything that is reflective of spirituality, there are systems and structures already built in place to fight anything God. But can I tell you this? Any territory that rejects God is a territory that will use their short lifetime paying that price. Let every other name fade away. Ghana, listen. Let every other name fade away. Until there's only you. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. That's our declaration over this land. Let every other name 
every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. The Bible says, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bore him a son. And he called him Seth. And he says, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. That means there was a time that they forgot to call upon the name of the Lord. There are things that must be born for, to remind men again. There are revivals, there are prophetic dimensions. Oftentimes when people forget about God, all he needs to do is take one step out of their lives. And in their pain and their distress, they will remember that there is the one true God. For a long time, there was no acknowledgement of that one true God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, when you read from verse 5 to 7, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The next verse says, in all your ways, not some, acknowledge him. To acknowledge means to, play, to place value. And he shall direct your path. The next verse says, do not be wise in your own eyes. It says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Through the technological advancement, advancement in medicine and IT, and all of these kinds of things as the world continues to evolve, it seems as though we are getting to a place where we do not see the importance of God in our lives, in nation building again. God looks like an alternative to failures. That means if you lack prosperity, if you lack intellectual advancement, educationally speaking, and you do not have any opportunity for influence, then you can console yourself by being spiritual. Listen carefully. The nation that rejects God is a nation that has rejected its future. The family that rejects God is the family that would have given up the future. The destiny that rejects God is a destiny that will spend its lifetime paying the price. For except the Lord builds the house, my Bible says they labor but in vain. Except the Lord watches over the city. The watchmen watch it but in vain. He says it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late. Only to eat the bread of sorrow. There is only one who can give his beloved sleep. God. Are we together? Very simple message. But you must pay attention. The nation of Israel. Once and again, they found themselves deviating from the ways of God. Moses went up the mountain to receive the commandments. And just for 90 days, he returned back and he met all kinds of spiritual halotry. They had built an image with the same resources that they would be using in the future to build him a temple. And they said, this be the God that brought us out of Egypt. I can tell you one thing with God. When the Bible says God is a jealous God, jealousy is not a negative attribute. Jealousy is like a gun. It depends on who is holding it. If a military man is holding that gun, good for you. If an armed robber is holding that gun, bad for you. So jealousy is the quality that makes you protective of anything that you have. So when the Bible says God is a jealous God, it is that quality in him that insists that the devil does not take advantage of you because you are his. And he expressed that jealousy by saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love, he says, and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. As great and mighty as God is, he was not ashamed to declare his vulnerability over his creation that he also calls his bride. 
Are we blessed? So my first charge tonight, before I begin to pray and minister, is that Ghana as a nation and every region must consciously return to a place where you acknowledge that there is the one true God. Listen to me. The God of heaven is not a nuisance to civilization. He began civilization. Are we together now? Yes. God is not anti-advancement. That was why I gave you that scripture. That it was the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. Behind the exploits of men in this kingdom, brothers and sisters, is the mysterious hand of God. Lifting men, opening doors. Nicodemus came to Jesus, John chapter 3. Please give it to us, verse 1. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man, verse 2 now, sent from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except. There are things that the world of men cannot afford. You can't find it in a bank. You can't find it in a school. The power of God is not saved in a bank. The power of God cannot be found under the earth. It's not a mineral resource. If you see a man walk in that dimension, it is God that gave it. Are we together? Listen to me. There are times that we think our intellectual prowess, and now I'm speaking apostolically, not just to the nation of Ghana, but to Africa and also the globe. We, we are coming to times where men are becoming embarrassed and ashamed to acknowledge that spirituality remains an advantage to men. Listen to me. There are times when your boat can be good. Oh, Peter. There are times when your knowledge of fishing will be intact. There are times when the net will be good but you will still not catch fish. Are we together? There are times where your inability to catch fish is not reflective of laziness. You went to the sea with a boat that was functional, with a skill that was functional, with a net that can catch fish, except that the earth is the Lord's. And so if it does not direct fish, you cannot catch fish. We must unashamedly, as a nation and a continent, submit our understanding to this rabbi of the ages. He's called the ancient of days. He has an advantage of time. Please give us that scripture again. Second Chronicles 5, 15, 3. Second Chronicles 15, 15, 3. So the first is without a true God. There can be many gods. When you mention God in our world today, God means anything. Including yourself. Including your mind including your bank account, including your certificate. But let me tell you this, the jealousy of God is so strict that anything that stands his place in your life, he will fight it even if he's the one who gave it to you. The moment it finds its way to sit in that position that is exclusive to God, you have declared war. And did you know that this God is also a warrior? When he fights, he does not lose. Let me tell you why many blessings, even from God, destroy us. Because when we receive every good and perfect gift that the Bible says comes from above, we exalt it to a point where it pushes God out of our lives. So your certificate, your intelligence, very necessary, but you can exalt it to push God out of your life. The opportunity to be blessed financially, whatever it is that he's given you, the safest position of a believer is when you submit yourself alongside everything that constitutes an advantage to your life under the government of the Christ.
to exalt him above everything above thrones and above dominions can i tell you this if your child is thoroughly educated but does not know god something is still missing if your child is responsible and yet does not know god something is still missing do not look at the knowledge of god and passion for the things of god as an added advantage to profitable living it is the basis it's a very simple but powerful charge tonight may we never exalt anything whatsoever no the woman with the alabaster box taught us a lesson the Bible says she brought before him an alabaster box of pure nard. It was worth a year's wages. And the Bible says she came at the feet of the master. And one synoptic account says she broke it. She didn't pour it. To pour it means that she was connected to part of it. She broke everything at his feet. And then she used her hair that the Bible says is the glory of a woman to wash his feet. When it has to do with him that sits upon the throne, even if you are an elder with a golden crown, you remove it. The Bible says the elders with their golden crown, that their elders alone is deserving of honor, and then with a golden crown. But they are able to unashamedly remove that crown and cry before him that was, him that is, and him that that is to come Ghana here is the formula that must remain in your nation in the beginning God Genesis 1 verse 1 I taught you on patterns yesterday not in the beginning technology not in the beginning ministry not in the beginning banking in the beginning when you compromise on this formula, the formidability of your structure will no longer be there. It matters that God is priority, not just that he is there. I can come to your house and you can leave me at the veranda or the balcony. I'm in your house, but that is not an honorable position. Is that true? There are visitors who come to our houses and we leave them at the gate. It's a level of honor. There are others who may be in the compound but not inside the house. But there are others we can even take them to the bedroom as an expression of our depth of confidence and intimacy. So do not tell me that God is in your life. Where in your life is he? Do not smuggle him in the midst of a plethora of activities and then he occupies position 50 or 51 he's in your life but his jealousy will not rest until he becomes number one so don't tell me you are saved don't say you are a christian god is calling us tonight to a point where as a united people we must come to a point where he becomes king of kings Lord of Lords and Lord of all. If you ever buy into that narrative that the more you commit your heart to the Lord, the more you fail, please look at my life as an example that nobody gives him all and remains down. The Bible declares, no eye has seen, nor ear heard. That means no dimension of revelation has gotten there. No dimension of the prophetic has gotten there. A state where God has prepared the things for them that love him. More than a man of God, more than a businessman. There are things with God that is a love issue. Only genuine lovers of God can move past that realm. Please hear what I'm telling you. 
You can be a prayer warrior and not be a lover of God. You can be a diligent man of God and not be a lover of God. You can be a philanthropist and not be a lover of God. I'm not just calling on those who work for God. I'm not just calling on those who know about God. You can know about me by reading my books, but you know me by meeting me. My obsession and my passion has been to lead this campaign across the nations that there is a God in heaven. The king in his pride, negating the authority and the government of God, was turned to a beast, not a parable. It happened for seven years, a beast with the brain of a human to remind him that there was a God that sits upon the circles of the earth. Can I tell you, just because God is silent does not mean he's weak. There are times where God can arise. Are we blessed? Let me encourage all who love and serve his purposes, especially co-laborers. Let us love God more than ministry. Ministry can become an idol. Let us love God more than church. Love God more than prayer group. Love God more than whatever it is. Whatever you do only finds relevance to the degree to which your love is intact. I love him more than ministry. I would give up ministry a thousand times to protect my love for him. Hear what the psalmist said. He says, better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere that I rather be a doorkeeper. That's how much he desired his presence. No wonder he was a man who was called a man after God's heart. That was a testimony that not even Moses got, even though he met God face to face. Can I tell you this? The greatest testimony in my life, at the end of my life, if I have a testimony I want the nations to know, it should not be that I traveled around the world bringing the power and the glory of God. It shouldn't be that this was another apostle and another revivalist. I covered the testimony of Enoch and Enoch walked with God. So I'm bringing to your consciousness again their Ghana, their Africa, Dear earth, there is a God that sits in heaven. He's not one of those superstitious cosmic realities. He's the God of the universe. And he sent his son Jesus. The Bible calls Jesus the express image of the invisible God. Jesus, a revelation of the love of the Father. Jesus calls himself the way and the truth and the life. Jesus, the epicenter of the Christian faith. That the moment your faith is hinged around any other auxiliary spiritual activity outside of Jesus, you are already in error. The Bible calls him the author and the finisher. He cannot be omega over what he's not alpha over. He has to be alpha before he becomes omega. So if you do not start with him and he meets you somewhere in the journey of your life, you will go back again. The only way he becomes omega is if you allow him become alpha. Listen, the idea of Jesus is more than a Christian idea. The idea of Jesus is more than a philosophical idea. The one who is today enthroned according to the communication of the apostles in Acts chapter 2 that he has been enthroned, Acts chapter 2 and 3, Lord and Christ. Enthroned today. Romans chapter 10, from verse 9 and 10, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with your mouth, not I am a Christian, the Lordship of Jesus. You know you are a believer in Christ. 
you know you have become part of the fold. Listen carefully. Not to the degree to which you go to church. Not to the, 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 the degree to which you are a worker in church. As profitable as that is, there must be an exact experience in your life where Jesus becomes Savior, Jesus becomes Lord, Jesus becomes King. There are many people in church who might be on their way to hell because they are around the things of God but they have not made up their mind for a long time. Israel had no true God. This is life eternal that they may know thee, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. All the streets in Ghana and all the regions in Ghana must know that Jesus is Lord. This is not the activity of evangelists. No. The whole assignment of a witness. Can I tell you this? I'm not teaching on this now. I'm sure that God will grant another platform for us to discuss this. But the principal assignment of every believer in Christ is found in John 1, 6 and 7. The Bible says there was a man. It did not say sent from his father. There was a man, verse 6, called you, sent from God. You only pass through the territory of Ghana. So you assume the identity of a Ghanaian. But by your divine and prophetic revelation, the Bible says you were sent. Truly, like an arrow from eternity into time. If you pass through the U.S., they would call you a citizen of U.S. If you pass through the soil of Ghana by Ghanaian descent, they will call you a Ghanaian. But more than your territorial connection, the Bible reveals to you. Please give us that scripture. There was a man sent from God. When he got to the earth, they gave him an earthly name called John. Like they gave the word an earthly name called Jesus. His original name was not Jesus. There are footballers today called Jesus. There are Mexicans called Jesus. Their name does not carry power because it is an office. It is not the pronunciation of the name. It is the revelation of the office. The Bible says the same came for one purpose, for a witness. John was not a Baptist. John was not a prophet. Baptism and prophecies were simply strategies to make his witness effective. He was a witness. Even Jesus himself, revelations when he appeared to John in the Isle of Patmos when he was banished. The Bible starts by saying, Revelations 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave unto his servant John. That is to show him the things that would come to pass. And he sent it and signified by his angel. When you read on, he calls Jesus the faithful witness. So generically speaking, our assignments as believers is to be witnesses. A witness is a validator of a claim. You do not need a witness until there is a contention over a claim. Then you are asked to, to bring a witness. And a witness is only a witness if he has a token of truthfulness called evidence. If you do not have an evidence, you are not a faithful witness. This is why he's invested the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of God. All of these provisions are equippings to make us effective witnesses. But my first call tonight is Ghana, Africa, planet earth one more time let us not allow history teach us a lesson by repeating itself there is one true God and Jesus whom he has sent the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave that one as at the time that was written it was his one and only begotten son but today we know by the authority of scripture that he is now the first begotten of we the brethren. That whosoever believes in him should not perish.
but to have everlasting life. Let me pause for a minute right now and please permit me to make an altar call before I continue. There are people here, I saw such a crowd of people, the overflows outside, even extending right almost to the gate and there are thousands others following by way of the TV station, by way of internet. I present to you Jesus, not as a religious the head of a religion. I present to you Jesus as a representation of the love of the Father. This is the gospel of salvation. The gospel of salvation is the revelation of the love of the Father revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Man being the object behind that love and then it extends to creation to the end that whosoever believes in him, the Bible says that he should not perish but now become a recipient of his life. And that life is more than eternal life. What we were given is more than eternal life. Because theologically speaking, not to create any confusion, but everybody really lives forever. It is location, not possibility of living. Everybody in hell will remain alive. Everybody in heaven will remain alive. When you read the story of Lazarus and the rich man, when they exited the earth, they did not cease to live. So when you win souls, you ask them, where do you want to spend eternity? Not will you. You will. The question is location. The life we have been given is more than an eternal life. It is God's life. The very life of God. The invincible, indestructible life. It is by that life and through the ministry of his spirit, the Bible says we have become partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Jesus is calling you not just to be another religious person. Jesus is calling you beyond a church goer. He wants to give you a new beginning. There are many people listening right now, listening outside all across Ghana. My first charge tonight is dear people of God, one more time I present to you this one who is Savior, this one who is Lord, this one who came as a reflection of the Father's love. He is why the Holy Spirit came. He is why the Holy Spirit is in us. He is the only basis for a life victorious and a life indomitable. I'm going to make this altar call and for constraint of space, I'm going to ask you when I'm done talking to stand whether you are inside or outside. Two categories of people very quickly. Those who are saying, Apostle, I've heard about this Jesus thing but I've not been very intentional about making that decision. And then number two, there are those who are saying, Apostle, I've been around church for a long time. I remember confessing my sins, but as it is, my life has gone haywire. I need Jesus. Very quickly, you belong to any of those categories. Now, here's what we're going to do. Um, so that we don't congest this place, will there be counselors? Will there be? Okay, beautiful. So, now here's what will happen. For those who are in here, I'm going to ask you if you can very gently you don't have to push anybody as many who can stand here if this space is exhausted then you will just stand across the aisles when i pray with you then you will follow the counselors or you may return to your seat whatever instruction you are giving for those outside you don't need to come in you just move to your screen the overflows those following by way of tv or internet right where you are in your home your office you're going to make that decision I'm going to count one to five and I want you with the boldness and the determination of the prodigal son. The prodigal son said, how many hired servants has my father? And I'm here feeding with the swine. The Bible says he came to himself and here's what he said. I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say, father, 
I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not worthy to be called your son but take me as one of your servants. The Bible says whilst he was on his way coming, the father came and embraced him, kissed him, restored his dominion and put a signet ring. I'm counting one to five. The Holy Spirit is talking to someone who must win that war tonight. I, for a long season, Israel was without the true God. And then number two, without a teaching priest. According to Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15, the Bible declares that I will give you pastors or shepherds who are after my heart. Jeremiah 3, 15. I will give you pastors who are after my heart. The Bible says they will feed you. Listen to me. The level of spiritual understanding of a territory is directly proportional to the quality of the men and the women of God who are in that territory. Are we together? When the devil wants to bring a territory into a level of spiritual ignorance or decadence, all he needs to do is to invest his time distracting, confusing, and deviating the shepherds because the Bible says when there is no teaching priest then there is no platform for methodical worship of believers it means then that it is impossible for believers to grow and become men and women of power and stature Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the Bible says and Jesus increased even Jesus the son of the living God he increased in wisdom he increased in stature he increased in favor with God and with men. Everything that is alive grows. So if we are alive in Christ, it means that we should grow. Are we together? Generally, for many of you who have listened to my teachings, you would have heard me say this. And let me repeat it for the first time in Ghana. That the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. An encounter with Jesus. That means no matter what you give an unbeliever as a gift. If Jesus is not part of that gift, you really did not bless the unbeliever. But that when a believer becomes saved, leaving the believer at the corridors of the kingdom will only produce babes. And when there are children, the Bible says an heir, for as long as he's a child, Galatians 4, differeth not from a slave, even though he be Lord of all. That means that his experience, even though a believer, will not differ from what was his experience outside of the faith life. Why? Because it takes maturity and growth to walk in the experience of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So, the greatest need of a saved believer is transformation. Transformation by the sound exegesis of scripture. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 1 lists six doctrines that represent the foundational pillars of the Christian faith. If a believer is to mature, he talks about the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith towards God, Number three, verse two, the doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And verse three, he says, this we will do if God permits. That means that we need to transit and to grow from the level of spiritual immaturity. Like I respectfully observed yesterday, the average believer in Africa needs to contend for greater levels of illumination to grow. We need to grow. And listen to me. There are two principal indices that measure the spiritual growth of a believer. Number one, you are growing as a believer to the degree to which you conform experientially to the image and the character of the Christ. That is the first biblical index to measure spiritual growth. Paul was speaking to those who were already saved and he said, my little children in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. The first biblical index to measure spiritual growth 
is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. Number two, the second biblical index that is used to measure spiritual growth is your depth of comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. Mm. He told Job, he said, knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? He says, and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth? Psalm 82 and verse 5, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Next verse says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some, are children of the most high. Verse 7 says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. It takes knowledge to rise. Paul was speaking and he said, I went up by revelation. By desire, I went up by revelation. Psalm 60 and verse 1, Arise and shine, for your light is come. Not your light is with us. Isaiah 60, I keep saying Psalm, Isaiah 60 and verse 1. Arise, he says, shine, for your light is come. Not your light is available, is when it comes to you. Ezekiel chapter 2, when you read from verse 1 and 2, the prophet received an instruction. Son of man, stand up upon your feet and let me speak to you, verse 1. And the Bible says he did not have the strength. Verse 2 says, and the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. Someone must leave this level of spiritual immaturity through transformation. Transformation. I beseech thee, Romans 12 and verse 1, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable act of service. Verse 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 says, permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a construct of an understanding that was in Jesus. And the Bible says that we must sustain the mind of Christ. And that comes through the sound exegesis of doctrine. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Are we learning? There is Jesus the way. The methodology of the kingdom. You learn his ways. You learn the mysteries of the kingdom. Jesus was teaching. And in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11, here's what he said. He said, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It has been given unto you. Action Chapel, Ghana, to know. The word know there does not just mean to be aware that such a principle exists. It's the same word that is used between a husband and a wife. To know. Is a deeper level of fellowship. Teaching priests. This is therefore my respectful plea to the men and the women of God within this territory. Whilst on one hand I salute the magnificent work that we have done and continue to do as far as kingdom come is, kingdom come is concerned. Listen, there is a corporate call to rise up higher. There is a corporate call to go deeper into the things of God. There is a corporate call to move past the levels of peripheral teachings that do not bring edification and stature. We must trust God for grace to minimize teaching opinions and personalized dealings and return to doctrine. Opinions will produce an aberrated Christian. Believe what I tell you. No matter how supernatural the encounters are, they will have to submit to it is written to profit the believers. So, no matter what my spiritual experiences are, no matter the prophetic inclination or the apostolic inclination, I must be able to bring all my experiences only as support systems 
the Bible being the basis for communicating doctrine. For as long as our pulpits are filled with well-intentioned, well-meaning opinions, we are going to produce all kinds of people who do not look like Jesus. We don't have to be fake. You don't have to be fake to destroy people. Once you do not know the way, you will produce something else. I can be a very sincere person. Tell me one, one, one meal in Ghana that everybody loves. Give me a name. Oh, uh, all right. I think I'll walk with Jollof Rice. Praise the Lord for that bailout system. I thought it was a name I would struggle to call. Now, listen. So, if you, as, as anointed as you think I am, if I cannot cook and you put me in the kitchen to prepare Jollof Rice for everyone here, chances are that I will mess up both your time and that opportunity. Now, that does not mean I am evil. I intend to bless you, but the wherewithal, the know-how. So, just being a sincere man of God does not mean you will bless people. Just being an honest man of God that is void of deception does not mean you will bless people. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Can I tell you this? Respectfully, let me observe this, and I do not mean to insult your pedigree or in your intelligence. We must return back and become sound students of doctrine and scripture so that our communications are grounded and then we'll be able to produce results that are transgenerational. Now, listen, I'm not speaking to Africa as a stranger. I am speaking as one who is part of the continent. We have to minimize superstitious Christianity and get to a point where our altars become, even though we are gifted, even though we have accessed all dimensions of the prophetic and the apostolic, we must have the maturity and the discipline to exalt the word of God beyond our individual experiences. Listen to me. As I'm standing right here preaching, only God will tell you the number of things I have seen already. But the discipline and the self-control to shelve those things and ensure that believers are grounded in doctrine, then the gifts can become an added advantage. For a long time, Israel did not have the true God and then a teaching priest. The gifts of the Spirit can attract people. Signs and wonders can bring people. But let me tell you this. Only a sound teaching grace that is doctrinally based can build believers to a point of stature and maturity. Are we together? Now, one of these, my dear um, Osha, so all, all these gentlemen, please come. Let me use you as an example to buttress a point. Any one of you, please come. Come. Anyone. Thank you. Watch this. Assume with me, for instance, watch this gentleman. If this gentleman gets saved in the average African church or today's church, after three or four years, I should be able to probe his spiritual understanding and find out what has he learned in addition to that encounter. The average believer, if we random pick the average believer across Africa, he will not be able to defend the faith that he is now in. Not because he or she is bad, but they have not been methodically mentored. What do you know about prayer? What do you know about the word of God? What do you know about the blood of Jesus? What do you know about doctrine? Listen carefully. What do you know about purpose and destiny? And I will give you pastors after my heart. Once they are not after my heart, a good shepherd lays down his life. A bad shepherd can eat the sheep when he's hungry. Now listen. Listen, 
Can I tell you this? Let me put a disclaimer here. As I teach, do not point fingers at people. You know you have grown when you can allow love to even rise above revelation. The hallmark of maturity in the kingdom is not knowledge, it is love. So whilst we are correcting these things, don't point fingers at people and say, tell them, God is speaking to all of us, including me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't go back to your assemblies and hear a man of God talk and he's making some of these mistakes we are observing. Then you now begin to dishonor people and point fingers. Any revelation that has to make you lose honor to communicate it is not accurate. Are we together? That any revelation that will require you dishonoring the body. I wish I had time tonight. I would have taught you four major encounters that every believer must have to gain stature and maturity. Listen, no, 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 not. Let me just give it to you in one line. Number one, an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God, in that order. Number two, an encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit. Number three, an encounter with the word, not as the person, but the logos, the modus operandi of the kingdom. And then number four, an encounter with the body of Christ. If you do not have these four encounters, you cannot rise to stature and maturity. All of them deliver different products. An encounter with the Son of God is the system for administering eternal life. Apostle John said, this is the record. This is the testimony that God had given us eternal life. And he says that life was so constructed that until you encounter the son, you cannot have that life. And then number two, the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Even though the Holy Spirit plays a role at the new birth experience, you need to encounter the Holy Spirit in his office. Jesus was teaching and he said, I have many things to tell you, John 16, but ye cannot bear them now. He says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, that he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but that whatsoever, he will show you things to come. The spirit of truth. That means trust whatever he tells you. There is no lie, no guile, no deception. He is the spirit of truth. The Bible also calls him the comforter, the paraclete, an extension of the ministry of Jesus. That the world is not able to receive of him for two reasons. One, they cannot see him. Is that true? Yes. It says, but you know him, for he is with you and shall be in you. Now he has come to live in us. The Holy Spirit you must encounter the person and the office of the Spirit and the Lord walking with them. Confirming the words with signs following. The third encounter, like I stated, is the encounter with the Word of God as the logos of God, not just as the person, Jesus. The modus operandi of the kingdom, the cure for ignorance, spiritual authority is derived from your comprehending the word of God is the word exousia, the capacity through knowledge to stand in the stead of another. Just because you have encountered Jesus does not mean you will be able to command authority and power in this kingdom. The centurion said, for I am a man under authority. I say to one, go and he goes. Come and he comes. Do this and he does it. We must submit to the word of God. Ignorance will defeat any believer. Ephesians 4 and verse 18, Paul mentoring the church in Ephesus, he said, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. In fact, the assignment of Satan, who is the God of this system, is to blind the minds of people. It is such people that the word of God becomes 
null and void. It becomes unprofitable. So what then is the assignment? Listen carefully. What then is the assignment of a true man of God as far as the communication of sound doctrine and the building of believers within a territory is concerned? Ephesians chapter 3. Be patient with me, please, as we read to 9. The real verse is verse 9, but let me start from verse 3. Ephesians 3 and verse 3. Is God helping us? How that by revelation Paul is speaking now. He made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote afore in few words. I am certain that the sermons you've embraced have been a wellspring of blessings, lifting your life and igniting a profound commitment to wholeheartedly serve God. We extend a heartfelt invitation for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, ensuring you remain connected and never miss any upcoming videos by activating the notification bell. Your subscription transcends a mere click. It symbolizes a dedication to continual spiritual growth, enlightenment, and empowerment. Embark on this faith-filled odyssey with us, as our channel strives to become a sanctuary for both spiritual seekers and steadfast believers. We staunchly believe in the transformative prowess of God's Word, and our objective is to disseminate messages that deeply resonate with the essence of your soul. Become a part of our community. Subscribe and let the radiant light of divine wisdom, your presence is integral to this uplifting journey, and may the abundant blessings of God overflow in every facet of your life. Amen. Stay connected with us across all our social media platforms at Flaming Channel, and explore more on our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Gratitude fills our hearts, and may God's abundant blessings continue to grace your life abundantly.